get more value out of your SAGE, ERP, and CRM data. That's probably why you are attending this webinar today. And typically when people come to our webinars or talk with us uh, from the SAGE market, uh, they are trying to improve their reporting processes, typically from areas like this, financials, sales, inventory, data blending. Uh, data blending is a kind of concept where people want to combine data from different places where it's very complicated. Uh, maybe you want to see you know, in your financials information coming from your AR or AP or SO information connecting them is complicated. Or maybe you're trying to connect your sales with your sales order, your quantity on hand in your inbound items. In all is kind of hard to blend data from different places. Or maybe you want to combine data from your CRM with your ERP data, maybe with your payroll, and blending the data is complicated. Other companies come to us to talk about data consolidation. They have multi-company systems. They want to see all the data together. Uh, it can be challenging. And some people, because just giving people information, distributing information is challenging. Welcome to our session. So this is data self-analytics. Uh, we're going to be talking also about Tableau for Sage ERP and CRM. Uh, my name is Johnny Girardi. I'm the founder and CEO of DataSelf, and I'm really glad that you join us today. So let me show you here uh, the agenda for today's presentation. So first of all, I want to talk about some reporting concepts, and just so you know to understand a little bit of the things that may be challenging for you today, then I want to show how those things can be solved and how DataSelf can add value to the process. Uh, we'll spend quite some good time showing our product, how it works. Uh, we'll have a QA session at the end. And then throughout this presentation, um, I'll do three quick surveys just to be sure we're collecting your input so we can improve our services and our communications moving forward. Alrighty, so let's talk a little bit about reporting processes. Why so many people have challenges with reporting processes? Well, first of all, there are different pieces of the puzzle that are usually uh, complicated. The first one is we call data preparation. You know, when you ask for a new report, the person who will be taking this report and building it needs to know where the data is and how to put it together. So they need to know the source database, let's say your ERP system tables, how to join the tables, how to make calculation with the tables. This is the data preparation, and usually also called the pipeline, you know, to bring the data from wherever it is to a format where you can see the information. This part of the work is usually highly complicated. The person doing this job needs to know a lot about the database structure, so not easy. The next step is data presentation. All right, I got all the data, all my sales information or financials, and now I need to build a report showing I know this year, this quarter by, you know, GL segment or this customer or this product and whatnot. So how you organize the data on a report is called data presentation. The last step is, hey, now I need to give this data to people who need to consume it. And that's the data distribution. Quite often in the mid-market, all of these three pieces of the reporting process are done by a single person or some consultants, highly trained people that will be spending time and time to understand the data, connect the data, using a reporting tool to bring it to a format and then emailing or somehow giving people access to it. Uh, so, you know, usually it's time consuming, is expert centric and it's not very productive. So that's, you know, how usually the reporting process works um, uh, for companies using a Sage product or competing products. So now before I move forward, I want to quickly make a, a, a survey here asking you guys um, uh, what are your reporting challenges? So let me launch this poll. So it should be seeing on your screen um, a questionnaire. 
I ask you to just choose all the options that apply to your business. You have four options. It's, you know, your reporting is difficult to use. It's slow, you know, runs, uh, queries is low. There's a lack of access anytime, anywhere, so it's not mobile enabled. Uh, and there's no, you know, lack of consolidation, maybe other. Click all the options that apply to your business and click submit. So I'll give a little bit of time, so be sure to check all the options and click submit. We're still having a lot of people submitting, so I'm gonna give a few more, more seconds, and I really appreciate that. Five more, five more seconds. Please submit your, your, your answers. And I appreciate it, I'm gonna close, uh, and I'm going to share. So as you can see here, a lot of people saying it's difficult to use. Uh, pretty much, you know, everyone complained about almost everything. It's uh, slow, 42%, lack of access, anytime, anywhere, 58%, lack of data consolidation, 63%. Wow, the biggest one. Cool. Uh, and others. Okay, much appreciated. So thank you very much. Uh, so let's move forward here. So uh, just going back here, so those are the things that usually people go through and the, cha the pains that you just reported or submitting in the survey are pretty common because quite often people are using a single tool or, or different tools that are not really designed for making this process more automated. Well, typically I'm going to show an approach that usually makes this process automated. Um, whatever the computer can do for you, this framework is usually a great way to tackle it. So here on the far left, we have your data sources, your Sage URP, your Sage CRM. Maybe you want to combine data with Google Analytics. Maybe you have Salesforce, social media, a payroll system, a point of sale system. Doesn't matter. You have all of those silos of information. Well, to take care of the data preparation process, typically you need to move the data out of those systems into a separate database where you can blend the data together. You can massage the data, you can make it clean, you can make it more, more descriptive for, for business people. So uh, in many businesses, the way to do the data blending is using a data warehouse. Uh, and for many people, data warehouse seems something complicated, expensive, time consuming. It can be. I'll talk later how we do it, but a data warehouse has the benefit of combining your data silos, your data sources can be Excel files into a single place, and now all of them will be able to be reported together. So typically data preparation is sold through a data warehousing. Now, when it comes to data presentation and distribution of data, there are so many options out there in the Sage world to do that. Usually, some of them will do something really well, inexpensively, but quite often they don't give you the whole picture of getting data in an easy format, in a format that your business users will be able to consume it anytime, anywhere. So maybe you wanna, you know, some of your users are gonna be consuming the data using their mobile devices, or maybe they wanna receive the reports on a schedule basis in, a, in their inbox. So different people access information in different ways and having a platform that can fulfill or, or deliver functionality for all these different methods is critical. Um, and most importantly, once the data has been prepared, uh, one of the main things you wanna do on the data presentation is a, is a framework that will allow you more data-driven decision makers to become self-sufficient. They should be able to consume the data anytime, anywhere. They should be able to drill down. They should be able to slice and dice. They should be able to even build new dashboards, new reports without calling for IT. And how is that possible with this framework? Well, if you look at this, this part in the middle is still highly technical, probably more technical than what you're using today. You know, building, maintaining a data warehouse you have to be a more IT expert than probably just building a crystal reports. 
But the beauty of this is, once this data warehouse has been properly plugged to your data sources, and all the data has been blended following whatever rules that you want to see your data, once that, that hard, difficult work has been done, now if you have the right analytics platform, business people be able to start spinning reports, creating new insights without calling for support. It is amazing how much easier data analysis becomes once the data preparation has been properly taken care of. And we'll show how we do that later to see how much value get out of this. But anyhow, there are in the Sage market different people offering some kind of framework like this. We're all, we're all one of them. We've been doing this for the longest. Uh, but you know, I encourage you as you're looking for your options for people who prepare, who provide you with a data preparation format like this using a data warehouse in an analytic solution that is really going to fit your needs. Now. That's, you know, overall, the reporting challenges in how you can tackle them in the long run. Let's talk about data self now. How do we do it and in, in why we're doing this way? So let me go a little back in history when I founded data self. Um, I was already working with BI in this market, you know, mid-sized companies. Uh, and I was thinking, oh my gosh, you know, decision makers here, they need data. Their problems are very critical from a reporting standpoint. But the tools available in this market, you know, inexpensive tools, are kind of clunky. You know, it's very hard. I mean, decision makers, they're not typically IT experts. You know, they're running business. They're managing people. They are, you know, selling stuff. So the reporting tools in the mid-market are too clunky. I don't think I'm going to work with them. What I want to do is, is, in my vision, was... I want to find in the Fortune 2000 world the best of the breed reporting tools that can fit this market. And I want to add my own secret sauce to make them simple, to make them affordable, so you can take advantage of it. So that's what we do. You know, we go to the upper market, the, the, we, we take the best of the breed technology and make you work together. It's that simple. So I'll talk a little bit more about you know, how we do it, but overall, it's taking the best of the breed, make it work for you, and you're not gonna break the bank, you're gonna get a lot of value out of it. Quite simple idea. So let me talk how our solution came together. Uh, so since we, we started the company, we've been uh, using Fortune 2000 vendors to complement our technology. And one of the ways to see which ones are doing best is usually at the Gardner Magic Quadrant for BI and analytics platforms. Uh, and over the years, we have been always using, uh, you know, vendors who are really well positioned in the Gardner Magic Quadrant. And, you know, right now, the latest solution we have has nothing but the very leaders, you know, the top vendors, Tableau and Microsoft, as being part of our enterprise grade technology. So again, what data self is bringing as value to you is nothing but what is really best for Fortune 2000, making simple, making affordable for you to take advantage and to maintain it. Uh, putting back the architecture that I showed before, this is how our pieces work together. So the data warehouse that I was talking about before, something we do very differently than other vendors is we use our own ETL tool. ETL means extraction, transformation, and loading. And this tool extremely simplifies the process of deploying and maintaining a SQL Server data warehouse. In SQL Server data warehouse, in one of the most popular frameworks out there. Many of our competitors also use a SQL Server data warehouse but they use SQL Server programming, which is usually very time consuming and usually takes a long, long time to deploy and maintain. Because of our ETL, we are the opposite. It's easy, it's fast, and simple. Then on the analytics side, you know, the data presentation and distribution, we use the Tableau in-memory analytics platform, which can be deployed on-premises or in the cloud, both approaches available. But this uh, technology has been proven to be the most successful platform for empowering business users to 
access their data anytime, anywhere, and being able to change data, you know, to slice and dice, drill down, and even create new reports without calling for IT. So this is how we put the pieces together. Again, enterprise grade technology, the leaders made it simple, made it work for you. Now on the Tableau side, I like to spend more time because it's an amazing uh, what Tableau does. Uh, when we were choosing uh, five years ago, a replacement for our old client tool, eventually we chose Tableau. And I think this sentence is one of the most critical pieces of why we bet on Tableau and then it became really, really good. So this says, you know, a lot of data visualiz visualization research is really about making pretty pictures. But we worked with psychologists and graphic designers to understand how people deal with visual data and process it. It's impressive because, you know, when you are trying to get data uh, insights out of your data, it's a discovery process. Like, let's say, hey, I want to see how, you know, things are not doing so well. What's going on? You know, people go through a process of discovering their trends. They look in different spins, different charts. It's a process. And many of most of the other BI vendors, uh, analytics platforms, then Tableau, they try to make flashy, beautiful things, but they're not necessarily insightful. They are geeks designing flashy things. Tableau focuses in what functionality will give you, the decision maker, quick insights into what you need to do. And it's going to be beautiful, yes, but the most important thing is they want to see your insights. The, the focus is not in the beautiful, it's the insights. Let me show a few examples which I think, uh, uh, hope is going to relate to you. How about this? What should I do? We humans, we know when we see this, we just get the hell out of it. We have evolved as a species with being visual, and if you see something that quickly gets to your senses, you react quickly. And if we didn't have this kind of sense, maybe we haven't survived. So it works. So that's kind of you know the tableau way. You know how can we have this kind of perception when you look at your data and you quickly see what's going on? Well. This is a little extreme example, but I'm just trying to make the point. Uh, overall, most companies, you know, use a lot of, you know, rows and columns reporting uh, out of the data, and it's great, it is valuable, and Tableau definitely supports this approach. There's a lot of ways to do it, usually much easier and faster than, than other options. But, you know, rows and columns is a, is a great way to analyze data, especially in a more granular level. Now, there's also the more visual, and I want to see information in different ways. So let me show an example that Tableau really excels at. Suppose you want to see these this, this numbers and you want to count how many nines you have here. You know, some people may quickly give you the number because they are very you know, gifted at seeing how many nines are out of this myriad of characters. Most of us, it's going to take a while. So what Tableau does is, how about this? It's using simple techniques to highlight what you want to see and give you insights more quickly. So when I look at now, yeah, there's about 10. Much quicker, much more visual. Uh, another example, maybe I'm looking at this spreadsheet. And if I'm one of those few gifted people that look at this, these numbers, and in a few seconds I can tell trends across the board, who's the most profitable, who's selling the most, most of us can't. Unless you go through and look in detail, it's very hard to look at that information. With Tableau, the engine has been designed to give you this. Now, if you look, you know, which are the biggest sales, but much easier. The big um, bars here shows that uh, Central is the biggest um, area of profitability, of, of sales. Which ones are not so profitable? Well, quickly you can see so now, visually, you have a much quicker insight. One more example here. Pie charts, so beautiful. 3D pie charts, so beautiful, so insightful. Really? 
They're very beautiful, no question about it, but they can be deceiving. So when you put in an angle the, the slices, sometimes you have no, not a good idea which slice is bigger. So Tableau makes it hard for you to make 3D pie charts because they are deceiving. What you need is insight in a 2D pie chart is what you should be looking at. So again, these are some of the things that Tableau does really well at focusing on giving you insights, beautiful insights, but mostly insights and not just fluffy views. The final piece of the value that we provide out of the box is just a good starting point of reports and dashboards. If the good starting point has more than 5,000 templates, you know, reports, dashboards, and KPIs. How did we build them? Well, my team, we have been doing this enterprise-grade BI for mid-sized companies for 16 years now. And at the beginning, we started with, you know, zero reports. It was just a pretty tool. But as we learned how our clients were looking at data, we started to realize, well, that's really cool. How about we add to our out-of-the-box solution? So we kind of crowdsource our uh, list of out-of-the-box reports, and today it's a great starting point. More than half of our clients find that the out-of-the-box solution is all that they need. They take it on and they just take it over. The other half require more customizations, data blending, whatnot, but for them, the out-of-the-box still proves to be a great starting point. So not only about having a great reporting platform, but shortcut, shortcutting the time is going to take your company to really get value out of your data. It's all about getting value out of your data. Alrighty, let's make our second poll. Very quickly, I'm going to open another poll. Uh, and you should be seeing now uh, what are your main reporting areas. So please vote you know, which areas, if you're gonna be trying to improve, you wanna have tackle as soon as possible. I know maybe you wanna have all of them eventually, but if you've seen the next few months, which ones would be the most important? Please submit your answers and press uh, submit. Okay, uh, I'm gonna wait for five more seconds. All right, I'm closing the poll. Thank you. Let me share it. So look at that. Really appreciate it. Um, financials is the biggest. Sales is the second. Inventory management the third. CRM the fourth. And others is the fifth. Much appreciated. Okay, thank you very much for your feedback. Uh, so let's go for the product demo. What I'm going to be showing you is self-service BI in data discovery. And pretty much what I'm gonna be showing you here today is the Tableau user interface. We have an OEM with Tableau, so what you see is actually data self-analytics branded, but using the Tableau engine behind the scenes. And what I'm going to do is actually replicate one of the situations, uh, one of the case of one of our clients, a California company uh, distribution here in California where the CEO needed to get many reports for his uh, board, monthly board meetings and every time he was going through this process he was spending, he and his team were spending quite a lot of time to get the data ready for the meeting and I'm going to show how he was able to do it himself. So the first part of, of it is um, they need to see this month's sales details. They want to see sales by product, sales by customer, invoice number, invoice dates. I'm going to show you how uh, rows and column reports come together. Then the second one was actually a data blending need. They have Google Analytics data, and they want to combine with their actual sales to see how marketing initiatives in their website was affecting sales. So I'm gonna show you that as well. Then the, the, the next one is, you know, they were selling across the whole USA and they wanna see 
sales by state and how big the deals are or were. So I'm going to sh show those examples and also some other reports that were required for the board meetings in all in this part of this presentation. Let's do it. Finally, get out of the PowerPoint. I know some people got bored with PowerPoint. OK, so uh, now I'm switching the user interface into the data self analytics desktop. And I'm going, to st I'm going to start showing you how to build things from scratch. And then I'm going to show you how they look and how they can distribute the information, how does it, the information can be distributed automatically to your users. So let's start with the first, um, with the first problem, which is you know the report showing this month's sales details. So once this, you know, the, this company acquired Data Self and they went through training, the CEO was able to do this. So hey, I want to see this month's sales details, and I want to see actually by product. So it's pretty much everything drag and drop. So I come here, I see my connector, in this case is a revenues connector, and I see the dimensions or things I want to see my, my numbers by, you know, my customer products, territories, whatnot. And then I have the measures, the numbers that I want to aggregate and analyze. So if I want to see product sales, what I do is I come to product, I drag and drop product into my report. So these are all of my products. And then I want to see sales. I drag sales into my report. So right there, I have uh, sales by product. Very simple. Now, I want to see this month's sales because of my board meeting. So let me take invoice date and just drag and drop in my columns. So now I have by year sales for all my products. Well, I can drill down from year to the quarter, or I can drill down from quarter to the month, and I could go down to the day, I can go down to weeks, fiscal periods, it doesn't matter what kind of time buckets you want to analyze. Once we do the, uh, the data preparation at the data warehouse, it's this easy for, for decision makers to you know, find information. All right, now I only want to see this month's data. I mean, here I have my whole company history, it's a lot of data. Well, I want to filter it. Again, drag and drop. I'm going to take the invoice date, drag into my filters area, and I'm now going to select a relative date because I want to see this month. I'm going to choose next, and here I select month and this month, and click OK. There it is. Now this report will always show me, oopsie, will always show me uh, this month data. And you know, if I'm the, the board meeting, and then if uh, my board asks me what happened last month or what happened this quarter, last year, and whatnot, in the past, the CEO, CEO would have to make notes and I'll get back to you. Now in these board meetings, oh, you wanna see last month? There it is. Oh, you wanna see maybe uh, this quarter? There it is. Very easy, very intuitive, very fast. Now they have data in their, on their fingertips. So, okay, so I'm looking at sales this month by product, but the CEO was going to the meeting showing this report by product, by customer, and by invoices. So let's add that information. Again, it's all drag and drop. Let me add customer. So customer, I'm gonna drag and drop right here. So by product, by customer. I wanna see invoice number. So invoice number here. Maybe I want to put between the two of them. And maybe uh, invoice date. Let's put between the two of them. Just whatever you drag and drop, you get the information. So with this kind of you know, functionality, it's very straightforward and very easy where the CO just did it. Hey, I want to see quantity shipped. Just Quantity sold, drag and drop, and you get the data. So tabular reports like this become something very easy, very quick, and very intuitive. Again, you do not need to be a technical person to be able to slice and dice your data and create new reports from scratch. Very intuitive. All right. 
Now, what about marketing versus sales trends? Well, now we have a data blending problem. They want to see Google Analytics data and compare with their sales coming from Sage. Try to do that with whatever tool you're using today, and good luck. Well, with a data warehouse like ours, we just brought Google Analytics data along with the Sage data. We mashed them together in the data warehouse. It was a technical work. It, was, it took some time. But once we did that, a one-time configuration of this data blending, now the CEO was able to do this. Well, uh, I want to see sales. I want to see sales um, by date. I want to see this actually by month. So I want to see sales by month. So right now, this is sales by month for the whole company history. Now, website visitors is here. It's part of my revenues connector. How it was, how it was done, IT took care of it. The CEO didn't just order it, do it. Once this, the IT did it, it became part of the automatic refresh. Now the CEO took website visitors from Google Analytics and dragged and dropped into the report. So these are website visitors. Let's make bars so they are you know, uh, easy to tell apart. And let's actually put them together on a dual axis. And look at that, website visitors and sales all together and they can see how one is affecting another. Very straightforward, they can spin it in different ways, different periods, by different territories, all drag and drop, and you can start analyzing your activities and really pinpoint where the opportunities are trending up or trending down and where the threats are. All right, um, regional sales by deal size. Well, now we're gonna see sales by state in how big the deals are. So what we do is we pick, let's say, customer state. I wanna see invoice sizes in sales. I just pick those things and I tell the tool, show me this data. The same thing that I showed before with the kind of the snake little joke, you see how things easy are, how easy th things are here. This tool, this is Tableau engine, again, has been designed to make visual representations of your trends easy and fast and informative. Not only beautiful, but informative. And it takes little effort for a business person to become self-sufficient in doing analysis like this just like the CEO of this company you know, was doing. Okay, awesome. So I built these three uh, views together and the CEO was going, is going to the meetings with his iPad. He wanna have these three views together uh, to be on an iPad. So now he creates a dashboard and then he's gonna say, um, I wanna have my uh, map at the top, I want to see my trend analysis at the bottom. It's all drag and drop, quick and easy. And I want to say, have this view on, on the right quadrant. Drag and drop, and you build quickly uh, this beautiful uh, representation. Again, uh, the idea is you should not make this something complicated. You should make this something that business people can quickly uh, slice and dice the data without requiring assistance. Once this, this dashboard has been created, in a few more clicks, it can be published to the web server. And now everyone having access to this portal uh, can have this data and start uh, analyzing and slicing and dicing. Uh, on the case of the CEO, sometimes in, in his board meetings, a board member would say, hey, I'm traveling to California and Texas. How are we doing over there? And the CEO, Okay, he makes note. Next week, I'll send you a report showing how well we're doing in those two states. Now, with data self analytics, he comes here and during the meeting, oh, okay, California is here and Texas here. He just marked those two areas. He got the report right there on his iPad and he emails the report from within the iPad and what's the next question? Shrink dramatically the time to get to the data increase the time to analyze your data, make decisions and act on things that only humans can do. 
everything else the computers should help you to do. Already, uh, so let's see some sample reports available out of the box, out of the 5,000 uh, lists we have, and show how people usually consume the data. Uh, most people will be consuming the data using a web portal like this. They will be logged into the web portal. When they log to the web portal, they will only be able to see their, their team's reports and dashboards. So if I'm the, from the finance team, I'm going to be seeing financial reports and dashboards. If I'm from the sales team, I'm going to be sales team dashboards. And then let's say, suppose I come here and I, sh and I, and I search for my top customers. Top customers. And suppose I found a report, I open the report. Now, when they open the report, security can be controlled in a way that will only show your own information. So this report would be the same for all salespeople, but if I'm the California rep, this would be my top customers in California, while the VP of sales open the same report and show in, in views the customers in the whole country. In, the, in, in this case, they are the top customers by sales change, meaning who grew the most since last year to date <clears throat> and who declined the most since last year to date. Or maybe I want to come here and see, I want to say, I want to see um, um, uh, pipeline information, you know, for CRM. And then I open one of the, those, those reports. And let's say maybe I want to see my funnel. And then it shows the, the sales funnel with all the details. And I can actually say, yeah, yeah I don't want to see only for a particular salesperson. And you can ch keep on changing the sales funnel and get that, that response right there. Or maybe I want to see my pipeline. And these are the salespeople, how much opportunity they have, and what's the total, all the details. If I click Add Martinez here, now I only shows Add Martinez opportunities. And I only want to see what is open. Very easy, very intuitive, using a web browser, an, uh, a tablet like an iPad, or a mobile device, you can get this information. Or maybe you are in the financial department. And then you open one of your dashboards or reports. Now, let me show about the drill down capabilities. Um, sometimes when you're doing these things, you, wanna, you need to drill down and get into the details. How can you do it? There are many ways you can get data at a detail level. For instance, you can click on a, on a, on a, on a framework like this, and then you can have uh, pre-configured drill downs to some more specific visualizations. So in this case, I'm looking at the New York. I click on the New York bar and I say, show me my monthly, my monthly details. When I click that, I go into a different report pre-configured that will have more detailed information in a certain way. And now for New York only, I have all of the details for all the months. Or maybe, uh, you know, I actually wanna see uh, the actual numbers behind this. I wanna see the, the all the transactions. Now I drill down into all transactions. And now I have all the information here. You know, if this would be, let's say, um, invoices, you would see invoice number, invoice date, salesperson, customer, product, ship to every single detail is here. You can download the information if you want to an Excel file and take it offline if you want to. So drilling down, uh, to the most detail level can be in different formats, and you can use again different tools or different uh, uh, user interface to get to that point. All right. Um, finally, you know people need different ways to access their data. Some people are always sitting on a desktop, so they can use the desktop client like I was showing, or they can use a web browser. Some people are mobile. They need to gather information on mobile devices, on tablets, on smartphones. This framework has native iOS and Android apps for mobile devices. So all of the things that I'm showing you here will also be available on mobile devices. And some people simply want to receive on a scheduled basis uh, on their inbox. And then you can click and say, I want to subscribe and receive this particular uh, um, uh, dashboard every day, every week, every month. So different ways people can consume the data, this framework can deliver. Alrighty, let's move forward. I hope you have enjoyed the demo. 
So in a nutshell, what are the main benefits of data self? The most important one is empowering the decision makers, giving them access anytime, anywhere to their data so they can shrink the time to get to the data so they have more time to analyze, to decide, and to act on. How do we do it different than other vendors? Well, we have a very easy to deploy, maintain data warehouse, and we use an analytics platform that is powered by the leaders in the Gartner's Magic Quadrant. So pretty much there is nothing better overall. It may not be specific for you, but overall is the best technology available for Fortune 2000. And on top of that, we have more than 5,000 reports, dashboards, and KPIs as a starting point. So you don't have to build anything from scratch. There's a lot of things ready to go. So that's benefit number one, empowering decision makers. The second is, this technology will reduce the, your reporting labor by more than 80%. A lot of the repetitive tasks will be automated by this framework. How we do it? First of all, it's significantly easier and faster to build and modify reports. As you probably saw, it's much easier and faster. Auto, uh, uh, repetitive data tasks, data manipulation tasks can be completely automated by the data warehouse framework. So you don't have to copy and paste and calculate and whatnot. It's going to be all automatically processed. And finally, the tool has many ways to automatically distribute, distribute information to people in different ways. So those are the two main benefits. Before I jump into the Q&A session, I want to open uh, the last um, poll. And I'd like to ask you, um, how was this webinar? Is it being, being formative? PowerPoint session was too long. Uh, met your expectations. And if you want to be contacted at ASAP. So please respond and submit. We're still getting answers, so keep on going, please. Wow, I'm, I'm surprised with the results here. I'll give five more seconds for the last people to submit. Oops, I'm sorry, I accidentally closed it, but uh, I think we got most people. Let me share it. Informative, I really appreciate. I'm glad that you guys found informative. Zero vote for the PowerPoint session too long. Boy, I was afraid about that. <laughs> um, I appreciate that you guys found the informative and the PowerPoint was educational then. Uh, a lot of people met the expectations. For those who have not, um, probably will send some emails and I would like to know what we can have, have done better. And many people also asked to contact ASAP. Okay, very good. So let's move to the Q&A uh, uh, part right now. Uh, so if you have questions, uh, please use the GoToMeeting uh, question panel, uh, the chatting panel, actually, and submit questions. Let me see. So we have questions here. Question from Robert. Um, how do you compare your solution with Sage Intelligence? Robert, very good question. Um, so first of all, uh, we use Gardner level, uh, Gardner uh, endorsed platforms, actually nothing but the very leaders. So let me just put here. So the technology we use are the leaders for Fortune 2000. Uh, Sage Intelligence, they have two versions, the reporting and the enterprise. They're both very good products, uh, good pricing, but they're not as refined, as uh, robust, and as fast as what we support. So that's a kind of you know, more uh, generic uh, uh, comparison. Uh, what I usually like to tell people is, our solution is more expensive than theirs. Yes, it is. It does not break the bank. No, it does not. The price difference is not that substantial. But at the end of the day, what we tell is, you get what you paid for. If your pains are little, they may be a great way to go. If your pains are bigger, or if you want to be more empowering, you want to get more value, 
is the extra cost of our solution is usually well worth it. So keep that in mind. Uh, folks, we have more questions here. Unfortunately, we're running out of time. So we'll be uh, addressing those questions by email. Let me go back here to my last slide. Um, if you have, you know, if you want to talk about BI analytics, about competitors and other options, uh, we've been doing this for a very long, long time. And my goal is not to sell to you, is to educate you. And if our solution is good for you, awesome, we'll work together. If someone else's solution is better fit, I'll tell you, hey, those folks can do better for the price that they're asking. So feel free 